bike rack on a Model Y. Got another bike rack, Thule this time though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we have the Yakima full swing. We got some accessories. We got a big bolt. We need to figure out what that's for. We have read me first. It's not how we operate around here. We're just gonna jump right into this. So we actually opted for the two inch torque lift receiver. They do actually make an inch and a quarter, but we felt the two inch would really give us what we want out of it. Uh, and also allow us to use certain accessories that are only made at two inch. Like this, this is the Yakima full swing and it is a two inch, but this is why we wanted the tow hitch so we can actually transport our bikes. We each have road bikes, I have a mountain bike and we want to be able to go places. And I don't want the bikes in the car because then we can't sleep in the car if we wanted to. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting this together here. Get that in the hole. Then we can turn this, tighten it, so that it's really not coming out. And it actually even does have a key so we can lock that in there. So we should be able to do that. And now that free spins, doesn't do anything so no one can actually remove this. Okay, so David has brought over the actual bike part itself. And what he's going to do is he's going to hover it over here. I'm going to drop this bolt in and then washer and nut it. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, so here is the tube top that I had been referring to earlier. There's a click. Pull this like this. Same with this. And that will make it so that we can actually carry a bike like this because these do not fit right here. So, that goes around like that. And then we move this. So it goes around like that. And then you don't have to adjust it at all. It does everything. Now that still looks tight. I don't even know if that's gonna work. Uh oh, oh no, wait. What? I don't know. I guess almost not even enough room for that. Okay, I'm gonna come to me as much as possible. How come? Okay. How come like this is more recessed? Yeah, that's where the zips go. It's weird how that like, really works. More okay, and then I'll push it my way a little bit. There we go. Bike rack on a Model Y. So we're on, on the first ride with the new torque lift uh, tow hitch and the Yakima full swing bike rack. We've got the Thok e-bike on the back and we noticed the Model Y is showing this uh, ultrasonic kind of issue where it doesn't like it, it sees the bike is back there and it's concerned, but at least it's not making any beeping or anything like that. Exactly. The fact that it's not beeping makes me really happy because if that was beeping, that'd get annoying really fast. Okay, so we're going to try it first without using the full swing feature of this Yakima bike rack. And hopefully, okay, you get about four feet, three feet. You got about, you still got like two or three. You still got a ways. You're still good. You still got about two feet. Okay, stop. Yeah, it's no problem. So we don't, we don't even need this. Really? We, yeah. Oh, so sweet. we don't even need the full swing. This is fine because I mean, even with another bike, eh, oh, yeah, actually, you can we still, could, like, and you we still, still got, got a couple feet of, of room slack. on the cord. So yeah, you can do it. So now let's try it with the full swing thing. So now this bike rack moves this way. And if necessary, you could, so you oh, could. Oh, eh, we'd hit eh, here. Okay, so maybe it's not a good idea then. Unless you're at the end one, you could go with that one over there. Do you want to try this as well? So you gotta be a little careful there. How is it? It's 
okay, but you almost hit the hill. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, it is a new day and a new rack. It's not the same as the other one because the other one actually is right there with some uh, new shoes for Model Y. But anyway, this one is different. So the one I had bought before was the Yakima Full Swing, which actually has a lot of good reviews and everything. However, it wasn't necessarily the best or easiest to mount a full suspension bike, let alone like an e-mountain bike like what I have. But what I ended up needing to buy for that Yakima rack was the tube top, which we showed in our last video very briefly. Um, but I ended up needing to buy something like this to be able to do a full suspension bike because they just don't fit on the regular bike rack style very easily. So in come the Thule rack. This is, I have to look up the name because it's super complicated. So this is the Thule T2 Pro XT2. And we actually have the main bike rack here. And then there's an additional two that can fit on once you remove the handle and you can add that. That's actually how it was when I picked it up but I have since made it a double rack instead of a four rack because it is pretty tall, sticks up pretty high, and very far out. But there's a lot more room between the bikes. This is supposed to be a lot faster to load the bikes. I won't have to deal with the tube top, which now for like my regular road bike and everything, the Yakima is great. And since it's the full swing, it can swing totally out, which is really nice and everything. But for what I want and need, I think this is gonna be better suited. It fits bikes with very wide tires. They stick a little bit further apart, which is nice, so they're not gonna rub on it. And it's better for like full suspension bikes like that. This does actually allow you to lower it too, so that you can still access anything in the trunk and you can actually lower it while bikes are on it. So gonna sell the full swing Yakima probably because I don't really need two racks. And I'm really happy with this one. I got it at a great price. Bike racks though, I have found good ones are not cheap at all. Very expensive. I think the this one that holds all four is like 1100 bucks, something like that. I actually got a good deal from somebody off the Facebook marketplace who had used it just a few times and had just been leaving it in the garage, but they're moving and they wanted it gone. So I actually picked it up for a lot less, like 700 bucks. I think that was a good deal, personally. One other feature that I really like about the Thule rack over the Yakima is the Yakima had one lock for all your bikes. This has a lock for each individual bike and we've got the keys here. So it is actually really easy to put in the car. Really, you just put that in the hole. That's what she said. Or he said. It's not that hard. That's what she said. <laughs> However, this does have a different locking mechanism. On here, it actually just pulls out and pushes in where on the Yakima, there's a little pin that will pop out and then you have to push in to be able to remove it. Everything is free from hitting. Now, when we did have the other two, it did stick up a lot higher and came about an inch or so away from the spoiler. So keep that in mind. And then to tighten it, you just take this and we'll spin it and that will kind of pop out the little metal piece and really lock it on there. And then you can use your key that you have and unlock this so it'll just freely spin so that people can't remove this. So we'll just go ahead, lift this up here. And so yeah, we will have to move this back brace. So we'll go ahead and do that quick. I think that might be good. Go ahead and lock this in. You just bring it all the way up and over and then ratchet it down so it holds it. We'll move this just a little bit more. Almost to the max ability on this one. Put the little spacer right there in. Ratchet it down. That's actually really solid. And then here's that individual lock I was talking to you about. You can wrap it through here. You can wrap it through your tire. Um, this whole thing actually does lift off. So 
You don't need a ton of room to be able to lock it. Let's see. I heard some people did complain about there not being a long enough cable, which I can kind of undersee for big bikes like this, but even this, I can actually lock this right here. Got another bike rack, Thule this time though. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, those fit on much better than the Yakima one. Oh it's yeah. It's just so much more room. They don't like Man. even touch. It was so fast to do. It literally yeah. took like no time at all. And here, solid, solid. Yeah. And the nice thing is, is that we were able to fit these locks around the frames against those reports oh, yeah, that we yeah. saw where they might not fit. Everything fits. Yours obviously has a little bit more room because your frame's closer yeah. than the full suspension, but the full suspension has plenty of room also. Yeah, this is nice because they don't come anywhere close to touching or rubbing the no. car the car or each other. Whereas, yeah, the other one... Yeah, yeah, it's like, look at all the room for the pedals. Also, though, I think even if you look at the, the weight of your e-bike, you could probably leave the battery on there on the totally. Thule rack. And that, see, that's the other thing with the Thule is it can hold 60 pounds per bike, yeah. whereas the other one was only 50. Um, so we totally could leave the battery on there. I went ahead and removed it. I have not folded it down. Oh, yeah, the tilt? Yeah. Yeah. It should so, be really light. I heard that it's like a you know full chrome and stuff like that. It's pretty light. So this way you should be able to open up the hatch, I believe. Now, does that lock in? Okay, yeah, there we go. I mean, watch your pet. Wait, can you raise your pedal up a little bit just in case? I don't know. Let's just try it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's oh, not yeah. even oh, close. Plenty not, of room. not even close. Yeah. Not even close. So, yeah, you don't need it to tilt out or to swing out, I should say. It, no. it opens up just fine. The only nice thing with the Yakima swing is it would probably be easier to get into some supercharger stalls. Whereas this one, we're going to be pretty limited to using either ones that we can dry, pull into or ones that we can back up without having a stall next to it. So, like an end one, possibly. Yeah. Well, so, when We'll have to think a little bit more on this one when we supercharge. Yeah, but sometimes they're spaced apart, and if they don't have that no parking exactly. sign in there, you could still fit back there with this. Just got to go really slow and, and, of course, maybe have some help because you can't use your trust uh, your ultrasonic sensors. Okay, so here you can see this is what we see out the rear camera, and it does still throw the parking sensors, but again, they don't beep when you're driving, only when you reverse, and you can turn those off if you do wish. Um, but this is actually not a bad view. I, I think it's almost a little bit clearer than the other one we'll go ahead and put both uh, side by side and you can kind of see what the other one looked like too but this one's not bad at all so here you can see this is kind of what it looks like these are a little bit longer than average spots so the one thing to keep in mind is with two bikes it will stick out a little bit more now with four it would stick out to probably about here so when you're turning when you're doing anything like that you really need to keep an eye out on the rear Okay, so now we're gonna see how fast you can remove a bike from the Thule T2 XT Pro. Or is it Pro it's, XT? It's know. a mouthful, I don't yeah. know, we'll put it on the screen. Are you ready? Set, go. Moving the lock. Oh, oh wow, this is gonna disconnect the rear tire. Lift up, wow, it's mere seconds. And we're off. Wow. The other one would've taken a lot longer. So, especially for having like the tube top and everything, so this one is oh, definitely yeah. the way we need to go. No extra hardware required. Okay, that's pretty much it for this one. We just wanted to show you guys some different rack options for the Model Y. It also applies for S, X, and 3 should you have a tow hitch on those. Really wanted that Yakima to work, but unfortunately for us and for full suspension mountain bikes, it wasn't the greatest option. So super happy we were able to find this Thule. Again though, just want to make it clear, we are not sponsored by Yakima or Thule. We actually paid for both of them ourselves. We just need to find a good way to actually store this on the wall and David found some good ideas. It's like a little receiver for hitches that you can attach to studs on the wall and then you can literally put this right in. So uh, maybe we'll do like a follow-up garage video in the future. But yeah, comment down below if you have a bike rack, which one do you use? and how have you liked it. For us though, I definitely think the Thule is the way we're gonna go. 
But that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. As always, huge thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. You guys are looking to accessorize your model SX3 and now Model Y, much like this one. Definitely check them out. All linked down below and using code Tesla inventory will get you 15% off of your first purchase. My two must have accessories are definitely gonna be a center console wrap. Really helps protect that gloss black piano that Tesla uses. It can scratch very easily and show a lot of dust and fingerprints. We've gone with a additional shell on the Y2 and it also comes for Model 3. So definitely check those out as well as a matte screen protector. They sell that for the entire sexy lineup. We have that on each one of our cars. It really helps cut down any glare as well as fingerprints due to its oleophobic surface. As always though, thumbs up if you enjoyed that video. Go ahead and click here to subscribe here for some other ones and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.